Welcome back, Cat from Scratch, episode 14. Topic today is cursor ray tracing. Uh, basically, I want to be able to use the cursor to pick a face on our cube body and change the color. That's the objective today. There's a link in the description with a timestamp. You can click, skip ahead, and see the results. Um, first, I want to talk about the bugs in the code. So if you run the program, there are some orientations of our model for which the model is kind of skewed like this, which isn't correct. And I thought maybe it was just the way we we're projecting the model. But no, this is because I'm just retarded and I made a typo. So there's two typos actually, one in the trigonometry.c, which doesn't affect anything apart from our triangulation. That's this dot product is, is incorrect. This should be a plus. And then also in our draw.c, at the very bottom, in our rotations here, this magnitude quantity is actually incorrect. This is what we're using to actually rotate the model, and that's why when we rotate it, it looks a little bit whack in some orientations. This should be a plus in all these positions. Obviously, I copied and pasted code when I was doing it live, and I made a typo. So if I close this, recompile, rerun, there's now no weird skew effect in any orientation. Everything looks much more cubic anyway, so that's good. Um, I want to talk about the the rendering sort of framework that we have set up. So in our draw.c, in our shader here, this GL position um, is quite elegant how we're implementing our entire rendering. So we have simply a dot product. So you see u1x, u1y, u1z dotted with the position of the vertex, basically minus where we're looking. This is extremely simple. I mean, if you if you only knew how complicated some people make this very simple operation, you'd be you know so shocked. This is what they do. They do these like rotation matrices, this um, model matrix, view matrix, transformations, projections, you know, perspective stuff, scaling. It doesn't make any sense why they do so much complicated stuff for such a simple operation of an orthogonal projection. So ours is much better than this boomer cringe stuff that they they pedal online. So the way our thing works, if you don't remember from before, is we have this, basically we have an origin in space. We have a point we're looking at called look at, point we're looking from called look from, look from being the center of our U1, U2, U3 frame, and look at being the sort of model center ideally. But when we pan the model, we can move this around. Um, so the screen space here centered on U1, U2, U3 gives between negative one and one for both axes. And obviously the point at, this, at zero, zero is the center of our, of our U1, U2, U3 frame. And U3 points from look from to look at. Uh, and it's perpendicular to this screen space. And so the question is, if we have a cursor location here, is this cursor location over the body or over any given triangle on the body? And the answer is simply no. This, if you trace this point out along U3, it doesn't touch the, the model at all completely misses the model. Now, if you had a point, let's say right here and trace that out along U3, obviously that hits the model and it goes right through, but it hits the model and then it goes to the other side like that. And so the question is, um, how can we detect if the cursor is touching a face and if so, which face and where on that face and stuff like that? Um, it's actually quite simple to do that. So how do you tell if your cursor is over a triangle? Well, step one, you find the intersection of that red line, that cursor ray, with a triangle plane. So in this case, let me draw in yellow here. This intersects the, the this cursor location intersects this triangle plane. Let, so let me define the triangle. The triangle is going to be this triangle here. Let me define it in, uh, in pink. This triangle of interest here. Uh, this line intersects that plane right there, and this line intersects that plane, I don't know, right here or something. Now the question is, which of these points is in the triangle? Now to determine if it's in the triangle, we have an algorithm from before. I'll get into that in a few seconds. So for this first one, finding the intersection of the, the ray and the triangle plane, how do you do that? So intersections are quite simple between these two primitives. So a plane, algebraically speaking, is a set of points P in yellow, such that this is satisfied. P0 being the point, any point on the plane, and N being the normal of that plane. 
a line is any point in P yellow such that this is satisfied. So uh, P0 is a point on the line, N defines the line's direction, and T is a parameter along that, uh, that curve. And so basically, where this P and this P intersect is the intersection of the plane and the line. That's this yellow star right here. So it's very simple to solve for this. You can substitute um, this quantity in for yellow P and then solve for T. You get this. And you can substitute this value for T. By the way, this T value is the distance from the point, this is very important, to the space. You know, the, the T value is the distance along the line to the intersection from the point that you're looking from. That's very key for later. And you can solve for that P value by using that expression there. Now, now that you've done this and have found the intersection of the cursor and the triangle plane, how can you check if that point is inside or outside of the triangle? For that, you can use the algorithm from before, basically. You can compute these, um, have a triangle ABC, take the sides A, B, B, C, and Z, C, cross them with the face normal, and you can get N1, N2, N3, which are side normals. Now, if you take those side normals and dot them with the uh, vectors from the vertices to the point of interest, if all of those lines are those components basically you know these components here are all the same sign that suggests that the point is inside the triangle if these expressions are not all the same sign that you, that means you know that one or more of those lines takes the opposite side of this normal component and then therefore you're outside so if all of these are positive or all of them are negative point p is in the triangle so now you can tell how we can implement both these two steps it's quite simple in code, actually, to do that. Plus, we've already done this entire section, so we can copy and paste that code from before, hopefully without typos this time. So I'll, I'll implement this uh, function down here. We'll call it face picker. It will take in as inputs the body that we're looking from. So pass in the pointer to the body. We'll pass in the height and the width of our screen here. So in pixels, then we'll pass in the uh, x and y coordinates of the cursor, again, in pixels. Then we'll pass in, hold on, let me just make this bigger. Let me zoom out of this. Good. Then we pass in our uh, float look at, or look from, I should say, point. That's the origin of our u1, u2, u3 space. And then we can pass in the scaling factor, which is also a float. This function will return a pointer to that face. So we'll say a struct face. Let me zoom in a little bit to the, on this so we can see better. So first thing, we, we start off with our cursor location in terms of pixels on the screen, counting from zero, zero at the top left, I believe. So in order to map those to um, screen, screen coordinates from negative one to one, we just have to scale that by half the width and half the height. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So there you have it. Now we have an X screen space and Y screen space. We're basically subtracting the cursor location of pixels from half the width and half the height. The only difference is that the Y component is negated because um, the zero point is at the top of the screen, which means it's opposing the U2 you know, vector. So that's a little bit confusing, but there's a negative sign there, not, not, not a positive sign. So at this point, now that we have a location in the screen space of our uh, cursor location, we want to be able to compute the location in 3D space. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. So here we go. I have this cursor 3D size three float. Basically we have our three components, X, Y, and Z of our point in 3D space here. Let me zoom in. And the question is, how do we locate this, this point in space? Well, we're taking the X and Y components in the screen space, and we're taking them, oh, that's a typo, that's not gonna work. Um, we're taking their components in the directions of U1 and U2, and adding them together um, for X, Y, and Z, and that gives us our cursor location in 3D space from the origin here in yellow. So that's good. Now, basically I have to loop through 
our, all our um, faces in the body in order to determine which faces, if any, intersect the, this, the, the, the ray coming out of this cursor 3D point along U3. And so we have to define some, some iterator here. So we'll say struct face iter equals uh, body face. We'll start there, the first face on the body. We'll, we want to be able to save the closest face closest face. Also want to save the distance to that face or something like it. So we'll say float dist equals zero or so, I don't know, leave it blank. And now we want to be able to loop through. So we'll say while iter does not equal null. We will just do all that algorithm from before this algorithm here. And uh, Go from there. So we have to say, well, I'll just start from the top. So the uh, the first thing to do is to basically implement this expression here for t, because we have a basically we have a plane, plane being the triangle. The normal triangle we already have in our data structure. We have a, a value for the normal. P zero can be any point on the triangle. We can pick any of the vertices that we want. We have that. The line, again, P0 on the line is cursor 3D, and N on the line is the U3 normal. So we have all these quantities we can actually solve for T. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. Okay, here we are. I created a uh, float T and I've created this expression here. Again, we're using components from our uh, face structure. So we have a, our face normal here, X, Y, and Z components. We're taking the first vertex, so node array zero, x, y, and z component, and we're basically subtracting the cursor to the location, and we're basically computing this quantity here for t. Now that we have t, we can solve for p, so the yellow p there, so I'll say float p size three. And so p is very simple, p equals, as you can see here on the top left, p, p zero equals, top right I should say, cursor 3d, Uh, zero plus t times u3 new zero and then the same thing for y and z okay now now that we have the p location, that's the first step of this algorithm here. We found p. p is the intersection of the cursor, ray, and the triangle plane, p. Now we can go to our old function, our, uh, let me save this, our uh, geom.c. We had a function called triangulate something, triangulate face. And we had this algorithm here, which is what I showed down and below. So I'm going to copy all of this hopefully without typos this time. Into this uh, function here. And I'm gonna um, clean this up a little bit and I'll be right back. Okay, I copied the code in. I defined a, a PP a node that we're passing in the coordinates of P. So that's our, our point of intersection basically. Um, this point intersection right here. Then, as before, we're taking the vector of A, B, B, C, C, A, and the vectors A, P, B, P, and C, P, taking the cross product of some of them, taking the dot products, and then seeing if they're all the same sign. Now, if they're all the same sign, it means we're in the triangle, and then we have to do a couple things. So we say, if, um, we haven't defined closest face yet, if closest face equals null, or, um, distance is greater than t. That means that if our saved value for the distance for the, the for the previous for any one that we had before that happened to be closer is greater than this one, then we can set a, a new value for this. The new value being uh, closest face equals iter, and then dist equals t. It's very nice that we have t 
as the distance to from the the point to the plane that we can actually use it to calculate distance. Okay, that's a very nice uh, property there. Um, now here we have to iterate through, so iter equals iter next, and then lastly, once we're almost out of this function, we can return closest face. So that should wrap up this function, face picker. Now, how are we going to call this function? Well, that's going to happen in our, um, in our draw body routine. So in our render loop, which is down here. Actually, I want to add another parameter here first. So believe it or not, we haven't actually been tracking um, this look from vector yet. So I want to keep, we've been tracking look at but look from kind of falls out of the expression. Once you know u3 and the scaling factor, you don't really have to know look from because look from is determined by something that's perpendicular in this in this frame here, u1, u1, u2, u3 to the look at coordinate. So you don't need to keep track of look from, but let's keep track of it now because we used it as an input in the previous function. So I'll make a new uh, value here called um, look magnitude we have to rotate around um, whenever we're rotating the model. So we'll say look mag size, or just, just you know, size zero. And that will equal basically the magnitude of the look from to look at vector. So between look from and look at, what's what's the uh, the size here? So I'll code this up and I'll be right back. Okay, we got that. Look magnitude, just very simple expression there. Square root some of the squares. Now I want to add some, some variables here to monitor if a face is selected. If so, what face, etc. So struct face star uh, selected face. Then we'll say uh, int selected face number just just for you know to keep track of it, and then we'll have a boolean is face selected. And we'll start that at zero just to make sure. Um, we can set these values in our, well, we have to keep some space here. Hold on, let me add some space. We need to edit that. Um, in our event handling here. So it's not just mouse anymore, it's mouse and key. I'll change that, mouse and key event handling. I wanna make a new um, a new thing here. So in this button, yes. So we'll make a new thing here. So we're going to copy this uh, middle mouse click code and get rid of some of this garbage inside and change button two, which is the middle mouse button to button one, because we're going to use the left mouse button to click on, uh, on stuff on the screen. Select things. We have to pass in a, a, a few things here. So we will use the same query, x query, see if I have it somewhere. Probably have it. I'm going to copy this up here. We're going to query location of the cursor. It's the first thing. We have the cursor location in uh, X cursor and Y cursor. Now I want to um, basically use the function before. So selected face equals face picker. And the inputs, if I recall, were body. Uh, was it height first? If so, height minus 20, because we have 20 pixels for the, the, the menu bar, width. Um, next was X cursor and Y cursor. Then we had, oh, maybe we should do minus 20 for this one as well. Then we had our um, look from and our scaling parameter. We have to still define look from, it's not up to date yet, but we'll do that in a second. So we have a selected face. So then we'll say um, if selected face Oh, you know what? I have an idea. Um, let's let's make a new function here in our um uh, geom.c count faces. So I want to make a function here just like this one, but basically different in that it gives us the number of a face, not the number of faces in the body. So I'll do that and I'll be right back. 
Okay, I have this function get face number. Now we pass in the body and the face starting at zero. And it basically loops through until it finds a face in body that equals the face that you've passed in and it returns that number. Otherwise it returns negative one. Then I went and I added that to the uh, geom.h header right here. And now we can go back to our draw.c down to the bottom-ish and uh, add that in here. So we'll add a, a line here. We will add a selected face number equals get face number body selected face. I believe that should be correct. Um, and I will say if selected face number is greater than or equal to zero. So if it's not negative one, we've actually found a face, you know, that's no, we've we found one by clicking, and we've also found that in terms of it being in the in the body, then we can say uh, is face selected equals one, and then we can say um, print f. You just clicked on face number percent d slash n selected. Er, What's it called? Is it selected face number? Selected face number. Now, if it's not, we can say is face selected equals zero. So now we have a, a Boolean here that tells us if face is selected, and if it's one, we know that this in this uh, it's in this structure here, selected face face structure. So we can go up here into this draw style. And I'm going to code up some fancy like hack together stuff to be able to draw in this same draw loop, different colors for different faces. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, so basically the way this works is um, we do the same stuff as before in terms of enabling the polygon offset and the uniforms for the color. Um, but we have this sort of if statement here, if is face selected, if, if it's not, we do what we did before. If it is selected, we change our draw routine. So basically we say draw elements, and then by the way, the parameters here, this is a triangle, so what's what we're drawing. This this input here is the number of vertices to draw. This input is uh, sort of like the, the type, and then this is the offset. So basically the, the way this works is we're, I draw as many vertices are up until the selected face in the um, initial color, fill color. Then we are drawing just three vertices, so one triangle's worth um, at this offset, so 12, as so there are 12 uh, entries per face, so 12 times the face number. And then we go back to the original R RGB draw style for fill color, and we ch draw back the original, um, the remaining triangles in the in the body. So this should work, it's all hacked together. I did have to add in this select color. So let's um, let's go to our, uh, our our header file and, and change that. So I want to add in another line here, so that we have we have fill line background. I also want to add in select color, or maybe highlight color. Now we can go back to our draw.c. We have this draw style here. I want to make another draw style. For the select color, so we'll make a color. We'll call it select. And we'll make it. I don't know. We'll make it green. So 0.1f1. Fine. Sure. And we'll change this to select color, select. That's good. Um, now we did pretty much everything, but I do want to go back and um, add some logic here to keep track of the look from um, quantity, uh, like our, our look from uh, array. So that's just going to be at the at the bottom here.
I'll say look from zero equals look at, this is a very simple relationship, um, minus u3 new x coordinate times look mag. So where we saved before the original magnitude of the look vector, now we're using that again to compute the location of look from based off look at and u3. So x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z. Is that it? Is that all we have to do? Let me think. I, I think it is. Um, let's compile and let's run. What did I do wrong here? <laughs> all right, I'll take a look. Ah, okay. Obviously, it doesn't make any sense. Now that makes sense. <laughs> okay, that worked. Got our model. Let's see if I click if it changes colors. Let's see. Click on phase six. Look at that. Phase seven, phase 10. So they all seem to work. Let me check at weird angles. Look at that. At almost no angle at all, we can click on faces. That's pretty nice. So isn't that pretty cool? We just made a way to basically detect our cursor's ray, intersect it with a plane of a given triangle, then determine if our point of intersection is in the triangle or not. Then we changed it so we can actually change the color of the model on the screen. That's pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.